SS Sniper Wolf. Everyone knows the controversy. This video will be mainly me talking about why I believe she should be out of this app 100% because not just because of what she did that first time around, but now there's a second time around. Most importantly, it's about protecting the children and teaching children about morals and authority in the future. And I believe that she needs to be removed. Now, my belief is usually I believe the internet should be free speech. At the end of the day, the internet is now almost the city hall of public opinion. When you go on Twitter, whether you go on YouTube, uh, Twitch, Instagram, whatever, nowadays the internet is now the place where you put out your opinion, what you believe. And I think one of the cool things about the internet is nowadays some nobody like me can gather an audience of 2,000 subscribers and talk about whatever. That's the cool thing about YouTube. But I think that there's certain people that do need it to get removed from them. I'm someone who's still very, very pro free speech, but this instance is different. It's kind of like removing EDP. The reason why EDP was removed is because he brings a genuine evil that needs to be taken out the platform because at the end of the day, you have to understand that the internet nowadays, it's the, the celebrities that people used to glamorize back in the day, nowadays they're being replaced by YouTubers. A lot of people are growing up with YouTubers. 10 years from now, you're gonna see kids talking about how they grew up on Mr. Beast the same way kids of my generation talk about like Carly, Drake and Josh, Danny Phantom, Fairy Odd Parents, like a lot of that kind of stuff, or like kids from the 90s who said they grew up on, on Fresh Prince of Bel Air or any 90s cartoon or whatever. That's the way YouTubers now operate in today's modern day society. And Sniper Wolf is someone who is one of those big YouTubers. Now, to kind of catch you up, I believe it was Saturday. She had issues with this guy named Jax Films. Now, I got it incorrectly. Last time I thought it was Jax at the guy. I apologize for that because at the end of the day, I don't know any any of these two YouTubers. I know some people were like, oh, it was so obvious. Well, it's not that obvious when to me it was just this quick because I woke up that morning immediately recorded it because I wanted to go out for a run. I didn't want to waste time doing research or anything. To me, I just found this quick instance, made a video about it. That's about it. And I got it incorrect. The name, either way, most of y'all, people who click on these videos most of the time are not hearing it from me for the first time. Usually, a lot of you guys, when you hear about something, you hear from already someone like Optimus or Jamari. Because at the end of the day, I don't have, this isn't my full-time job. All, all, all those YouTubers are lucky that they stay home 24-7 and they're able to get the news quickly and then make a video about it. Me, unfortunately, I have to wait till I get home. By that time, there's already thousands of videos about it. But I'm still going to talk about it because at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a conversationalist. I believe in talking about stuff. But essentially, what happened on Saturday is she had issues with this guy named Jack Stone. Now, from what I thought happened was I thought Jax was making like hate videos on her. Apparently, that wasn't even true at all. What it is is that he was mocking her style of content. So what Sniper Wolf kind of does is she kind of goes on like this right side of the corner and she just reacts to TikToks and she's like, haha, that's funny, haha, haha. She's kind of like XQC, but not live and also female. That's the best way I can explain it. I tried watching one of her videos. It's boring. I know she's been popular for years, but I never really knew what she was. Like to me, I always assumed, oh, she's a gamer girl everyone's going to sim for her and obviously that's always going to happen on the internet if you're a female and you do something that's male dominant you're going to gather an audience of simps now i'm not saying all of them are simps i'm sure there's people that like certain content creators for their personality like for example i think people genuinely like pokemon i think people because she seems like a genuine person when i've seen her streams i don't watch her streams but i've seen clips of her streams and there's times where i'm like okay i can see the appeal of this with sniper wolf i never got it to me it was just like oh She's just meat writing on her attractiveness, which will probably fade away 10 years from now. But then again, by that point, she'll probably make loads of money, which she already has. But anyways, so Jax Films kind of mocked it by doing his reaction over her reaction and doing the essentially the same thing on his second channel. He's made videos critiquing her, and I've even seen a couple of those videos, and they seem pretty fair. He's critiquing the fact that through her glasses, you can see that there's clearly a script telling her how to react. He's talking about how you need to fairly credit the, the people who make those TikToks and all that. Jax has not harassed you. However, she had the audacity on her Instagram post that has millions of followers on it. I believe it was five or two million followers on Instagram. That's a lot of people, by the way. And she had the audacity to post a picture of his house fully on, his full house. And I've seen the uncensored version. Not by choice, by the way. 
and she said, come outside Jack Stones. And in order to justify why she did that, afterwards, she she said that it was because she was getting harassed. Again, first of all, she hasn't proved what, what the harassment is. All, she, all it is is that he's made videos on you. According to that logic, I've harassed Will Smith because I've made three videos on it. When obviously that's not the case, but going by her logic, that's what would happen. According to Sniper Will's logic, you're harassing TikTokers because you're just making videos on them. But anyways, so she goes on to say, oh, I don't even know what doxing is. All I did was look up his house address. Ma'am, that is doxing. Because the reality is when you purchase a home, when you purchase a home, that becomes public information. So let's say I'm out here. I'm a YouTuber. That's the reason why a lot of celebrities have their houses leaked. Like most big YouTubers, their houses get leaked. Now, the fortunate thing about those big YouTubers is they probably have security. The people where they live, they already know. Usually you contact the police. I think H3 has talked about this. Usually you're in a gated community, so they rarely expect something like that to happen. But that's just it. But usually if you find someone's address through Google, you have to put their first, middle, last name. You have to type it in and then you'll find records of their address. So either it was her or someone she knows that actually went out of the way to research that information. Now, I don't know if Jack leaves his last or middle name public. I don't know that. Maybe she figured it out. I don't know. I'm not going to make that claim, by the way. I don't know if that's public. All I know him as is as Jack. Jack is a very vague name, so if she somehow found it with that first name, I got to I got to find out who this person or I got to find out how she did it, bro, because I, I I'd respect that. All right. If you're able to find someone's address just by their first name. And also, I don't know if he's revealed what town he lives in. You could narrow it down. But then again, Jack is still such a vague name that it's almost like, how the hell do you find that? Like for me, I don't own a house. I don't own property. So I really believe that for me, it'd be impossible to find records of like my house or where I live I don't know please don't test that out and if you do I'm not afraid to shoot the fuck out of you because I own fucking guns okay so relax yourself but anyways now let's get into the new thing that's happened so she obviously got this criticism with that alone she should be banned by on YouTube by the way alone with just that she should be banned but now something else came out an old video of her resurfaced from nine years ago I didn't even know she was doing YouTube nine years ago 2014 I didn't know that but beside the point so on this Omigo call, and I'm not going to show the clip because first of all, I have no editing software. I'm literally recording straight from a phone, not even my main phone, which is good because I've been, I would waste a lot of battery on my phone and I don't want to do that. But this is another phone I had where now it's going to be my YouTube phone, but it doesn't even have data on it. So, so still, anyway, no one act like I'm rich. I'm, this, this is still brokey shit. All right. But anyways, there's this old clip of her. She was on an Omigo call. And by the way, I think Omigo needs to make it more strict for kids not to go on those sites because unfortunately, I really believe a bunch of EDPs are on that app. I think that's a sad thing. Um, back when I was a kid, I remember I sometimes would go on Omigo and I literally, so many times I got picked, I got to see boobs and dick. And I was like a kid, all right? It didn't traumatize me or anything, but still, it's something that I don't want any kid to see. Like I was 14 years old and I saw boobs and, and a dick and I hated that so much. And I, 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 it's something that I, I'm like, damn, okay. But anyways, I don't believe kids should be on the app. I think I think they need to make it much stricter. But then again, it's also impossible, especially nowadays in a day and age where everyone wants to be anonymous. They want to have like an anime profile picture and be like, guys, I'm, I'm, this person, this YouTuber, hey, he's fat. He's ugly. But I'm going to hide my face, guys. No, please don't look at me. Please don't look at me. It's always all the time. It's always the faceless people that always talk the most shit. Like, bro, if you're talking shit, at least be prepared to back it up, all right? But anyways, what I, what I was trying to say was in this Omigo call, she sees two kids. Now, I don't even... I've seen the clip, and I don't know if the kids confirm their age, but it's so clear that they are young. Not only that, but she titles the video, you know, Kids Twerk For Me. I think that's that's what the title for video was. And... In the video, she tells him, twerk, and I will show him, show you my tits. That's what she says. And the kids end up twerking in the clip. And at one point, she keeps, like, really wanting the other kid. Because one kid was very quick to twerk. And then 
the other she like the other kid clearly looked like she didn't, he didn't want to do it or at least it, he was nervous or shot i don't know bro it just took him a while but she kept being like twerk twerk i'll show you my boobs i'll show you my boobs now i don't know if she ended up doing it from the clip it seems like it cut and then boom that was it i i'm gonna assume she didn't one of the things I didn't like about the clip is apparently the mom of the kid that was twerking, she walks in and just starts watching. I'm like, bro, if I'm the, my mom would have beat the shit out of me, bro. My mom would have been like, what are you doing with this gay ass shit? What are you doing? Like, you know, and me as a parent, if I see my kid twerking, like I walk into the room and they're twerking for a stranger on Omegle, I don't care what gender they are. You're not doing that. All right. I'd be like, nah, taking away your computer, taking away your phone. You're not going to be doing degenerate acts. So there's that but sniper wolf was i think 21 years old now i'm 21 years old and i can safely assure you guys that i don't ask kids to twerk for me on omegle first of all i don't go on omegle because again like i said back when i was a kid and i went on omegle for the first time i just saw boobs and and dick which i was don't get me wrong i was happy with the boobs part but it's out it, for like one boob i would see like five different penises and that's that's a ratio that i'm not willing to risk so I don't go on Omegle anymore because at the end of the day, it's a degenerate, disturbing app, freaking app that I really believe you get sent to hell the second you sign up for Omegle. So there's that. Uh, but <sighs> she was 21 years old. Now, her teasing them with tits. First of all, I doubt that traumatized the kids. Some people are talking about like how she traumatized the kids. I doubt that did, but either way, as an adult, you have to completely comprehend and understand, especially as someone as her who was 21 years old, you're old enough to understand you're not a kid anymore. You have to also completely understand that now when you're in situations with kids, you have to completely understand that you're the matured adult here. You have, you're the one with the moral responsibility and everything inappropriate that happens is because of you and you need to understand how to mandate that. All right? So Sniper Wolf asked kids to twerk and then she uploads it online. That is already inappropriate. But then saying that you're going to show them your tits, that is also inappropriate. Now, I get it. Dark humor, funny, ha ha ha. I like dark humor. But it's a difference between making a joke and then actually doing something. Because I see some people defending this action as a joke. I don't get what's funny about seeing kids twerk. I don't get what's funny about that. I don't get what's funny about being an adult and telling kids that you're going to show them your boobs. I don't get what's funny about that. And so to me, and I know people are going to say this is canceling. It's not. This is just because at the end of the day, YouTube, their number one priority should be about keeping the kids safe. When there's something that's a danger to kids, it should be removed. EDP got banned, rightfully so. But the unfortunate thing about YouTube is there's a lot of creeps here. Whether you're talking about someone like Dream, obviously EDP was an example, Colleen Ballinger, and Mini Lad. There's been multiple times now on YouTube where there's a person who's confirmed to be some form of a cupcake hunter. And I think that's a really dangerous thing that's happening on YouTube. And even more dangerous now is that YouTube is not allowing people to talk about EDP anymore. There's people who have been banned from YouTube for it. Me, I got demonetized for it. I got When I was making EDP videos, it's no coincidence that YouTube, after years of them allowing me to post my TikToks fully monetized, it's no surprise that once I started putting multiple EDP videos, they said, oh, we are demonetizing you. That is not a surprise to me. And to me, that is very irresponsible of YouTube. At the end of the day, your app is mainly children. There's a reason why people like Speed are popular because this app is filled with children. And if your priority is not to keep the kids safe, then you got to really do something about it. Like that, that is a fucked up mentality because this app is for children. Even I, I grew up on YouTube when I was 11 years old and I had free access to the internet, bro. I wanted to be, I created my first YouTube channel. I started watching YouTubers everywhere. And I'm lucky enough that I never had to follow a YouTuber that did such heinous crimes. Uh, at most, I think I watched like a couple of Sky Does Minecraft videos. Now, I don't remember what Sky did, but I'm sure it was really bad. I think he was abusive to his girlfriend. I don't know if he was an EDP himself. I don't know. I don't remember. But I wasn't even a big fan of him anyways. I remember I just watched some of his Minecraft Hunger Game videos when I was like 13 years old. That was about it. 
but someone like Sniper Wolf, who has doxxed, it's not even just doxing anymore. Now it's stalking. That is stalker. That is a stalker mentality. She stalks people. She puts their addresses online for everyone to see. And then she says, oh, I searched up on Google. Bitch, please. Okay. That's like saying, oh, uh, it's like, it's like your mom catching your phone history and seeing that there's porn on it. And she's like, what is this? Why were you on the hub? And you're like, no, 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 mom. No, no, mom. It's on the internet. So it's not my fault. It's like, no, it is your fault. You searched up the hub. Same applies with Sniper Wolf. You searched up and you did a lot of research to find this man's address. And what's worse about this is that people can now just come up to his house. He's going to move. Houses are expensive, especially nowadays. House mortgages, everything. They're freaking expensive. And then that sucks for the wife. I don't know if Jack has kids. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. But Jack's wife is someone who's not on YouTube at all. And yet now her address is just leaked out there for the public. Because Sniper Wolf just didn't know that the simple thing could have been just call him up and try to arrange some form of meetup, some form of live stream, some form of video where they're talking. I mean, look at Sneeko and Moist Critical. Sneeko and literally Charlie exposed Sneeko for being a cuck, even though everyone knew that already. It became much more wide stream when Charlie brought it up. And even though some, because that really damaged Nico, by the way, everyone making cut, bro, if I, if someone found out about that, about me and they were making jokes about it, bro, I'd be freaking pissed, bro. I'd be angry. But yet Sneeko at least was man enough to say, Hey, let me at least talk with him on stream. And then they ended their whole issue. They ended their whole drama. That's all that happened. But Sniper Wolf just gets joked on. She has the audacity to go to this man's house. And here's the funny thing. She wasn't even man enough to go knock on the door. If you look at the picture, it's literally her taking it from across the street. Not even on the property line, bro. And then she says, come outside. Oh, you're scared of me? If you're doing that already, might as well knock on the door. Knock on the... If you're really that strong, knock on the fucking door. And I'm going to tell you this right now. To anyone who tries to ever do that with me, and I don't care. I'm from freaking Texas. I'm American. I have a gun. And I would, I would not hesitate. If someone came to my house trying to have some type of issue, I would not hesitate to put a bullet in that skull of yours. And that is a threat, by the way. Because when you come to my house, that in and of itself is a threat. Now, obviously, in the sniper wolf situation, I probably I wouldn't shoot from a distance because obviously that would get me in trouble because obviously she's not even in my property and every, anything like that. But if you do come to my house, bro, shooting your ass. And I believe in the Second Amendment. I know a bunch of you Canadians, all you fucking liberals are like, oh, guns are bad. Yeah, they are when they're in the wrong people's hands. Fortunately for me, I am someone who was trained since I was a kid to use weaponry, to use uh, to use a firearm. I have been trained and I have been taught to use a gun properly. I know everything about gun safety. And at the end of the day, I believe that every American who is in the right mind, someone who ha doesn't have a prison record and somebody who doesn't have some type of mental instability, I believe any American has should, should have the right to bear arm and protect their family, their friends, and especially when it's in your property. That's what I believe in, and I would do as that. But I know Sniper Wolf is pussy to where she didn't, she couldn't do that with, with Jack. So the people trying to take the high horse of Jack shouldn't have harassed her, what harassment was there? If anything, all it did was put Sniper Wolf's name out. Because remember, Sniper Wolf's audience is literally just a bunch of dumb children who are like, I like TikToks too, yay! So I got this person to react to TikToks, wait! Do, 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 do. That's... Sniper was entire content. It's not even like normal people. It's not like people who are smart enough to to actually truly have conversations or anything. It's just dumb people being like, D -d 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 -d, uh, I, I like you when you react to my favorite TikTok. D -d 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 -d. Yeah, that, that, that's it. That's all Sniper was audience is. So it's not like she lost money or subscribers from it. Not only that, but Sniper Wolf, you have done worse things, by the way. And something people don't remember is that she had a cancer patient who's dying. One of her dying wishes 
was to just get a FaceTime call with her. Now, unfortunately, that kid has now passed away. Her favorite YouTuber is was um, Sniper Wolf. And for some reason, she couldn't be man enough to where she could have at least given her a one-minute FaceTime call saying, Hey, whatever the girl's name is, I thank you for watching my videos, man. It means a lot. You couldn't do that. Now she also, she also has a prison record. It was for attempted burglary, I think. So I need to ask YouTube this. Why is it that you felt the need to ban people like Sneeko or Steve Will Do It or Andrew Tate who are dangerous to societies? Or society, I mean. I don't know why I said societies, but a danger to society. When you got Sniper Wolf, someone with a criminal record. Someone who is now stalking a fellow creator and encouraged her audience to do the same. And uh, many years ago, did weird things that should be criminal. How are you telling me that YouTube is a good app for kids? Because if I'm a parent, and I'm not a parent, by the way. I have nephews, but I'm not a parent. But if I was a parent... And I knew all this information. I would be very concerned letting my kids watch YouTube. And I'm not saying this to be virtue signaling. I'm saying this because it needs to be said. And remember, Sniper Wolf is primarily for kids. Because at least with Andrew Tate, Sneeko, uh, Steve Will Do It, a lot of these channels that get banned for like having opinions or anything like that, these are for adults. These are usually adult audiences or at mo at minimum, it's like a teenage audience that's growing up that are watching much more edgier content. Like me, when I was a teenager, I was watching Filthy Frank. Filthy Frank is as edgy as it fucking gets. I was watching Idubs, bro. I was watching all these YouTubers that made edgy jokes as a teenager. But with Sniper Wolf, it's literally dumb little babies. Dumb little babies who barely even know English. They're like... So I need to really, really, I'm wondering what is the mental process of YouTube? Why do you deem it okay to let this woman just go on your app, do these things behind the scenes, and then promote her? Because YouTube loves Sniper Wolf. They've been promoting her on Twitter, which they don't do for other creators, except for maybe the mainstream ones like Mr. Beast. And Sniper Wolf is probably in that mainstream category for YouTube. And so to me, again, if I'm a parent, I'd be concerned the priority that they have. You tell all these guys that they need to fuck off and go to alternative apps, but you got sl Sniper Wolf here? You kidding me? But I know at the end of the day, YouTube won't care. YouTube will strike. They'll ban. And they'll punish other YouTubers, especially smaller ones, for lesser things. You know, again, me. I'm a very small channel, so my voice, no one gives a frick about. No one cares about what I have to say, except for the small amount of people that watch me on a consistent basis. Me, I got demonetized. I couldn't do much about it. I appealed for it, and then they told me I had to fuck off and wait till December. But Sniper Wolf, on the other hand, stalks, doxes, does weird things with kids on, on Amigo. And... They're like, yay, Sniper Wolf, we, we love, we love what you do, Snipey, yay. Check your priorities, YouTube. Because eventually what's going to happen is some kid might get harmed. Or some YouTuber does something that goes beyond the line of, beyond the line of just something stupid. And it becomes evil. Maybe one day a, a big mainstream YouTuber is going to do something with the kid. Or maybe someone's going to go to the house of a YouTuber and shoot that YouTuber. And then that blood and then that trauma is now on YouTube's hands when they could have prevented this much earlier. Much earlier. Because there's, to me, if I work for YouTube, to me it's almost like this is a no-brainer. Just get her off the app. That's it. That's all you gotta do. But I know damn well that's not going to happen. Because they don't care. It's about money. And I get it. Companies are always going to be about money. And, and look, me, I'm always going to be about money too in my life. However, there needs to be a point in time where that priority should get removed and put 
the moral aspect of everything. That's what should matter, especially on an app with kids on it. Because another dangerous thing is that some kids, they're going to see that post and think, that's normal behavior. Going to someone's house, taking a picture of it and posting it for millions of people in the world. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, she's just a skinny little girl. What was she going to do? Like I said earlier, if you give the gun to a wrong person, something bad could happen. Because to me, if I see Sniper Wolf across my street, across this window, because my window faces forward, all right? If I see Sniper Wolf across the street, I'm just going to have the cameras facing her. I'm going to call the police. However, once she steps into my property, I'm shooting her. Blasting that head of her. In Minecraft, by the way. In Minecraft. just I've got to play it on the safe side. But if she's all the way in the distance, one of my big things is going to be, does she have a weapon? What is she coming to do? Is she going to harm me? Is she going to harm my, my, my mom, my sister? Is she going to harm somebody that I know that lives with me? What's going to happen? So to the people defending these actions, I just got to ask you this. If a person who you know from YouTube shows up to your house and then puts the picture of your house everywhere, how would you react? Me personally, I'd be scared. I would. I would. I know it's not a cool thing to say you're scared, but that'd be the truth. I'd be scared if someone took a picture of my house and said, come outside. I don't care how petite that girl is. I don't care if it's even a female because at the end of the day, males are stronger than females. I don't care who the fuck it is. To me, that would make me shiver my timbers. That would get me nervous. But at the end of the day, the ball is on YouTube's court. And hopefully, you know, it's game seven. It's G7, baby. Fousey 2, baby. <laughs> it's G7. And they're able to notch down the clutch three-pointer. You know, like Kyrie Irving in the 2016 NBA Finals. You know, game seven just... And then makes it in front of Steph Curry. YouTube needs to do that. And if Snipey continues to be on this platform, I will say this, I, I would have lost faith on YouTube. And it's going to be that kind of stain I have in my mind for forever. It's going to be this thing that just, to me, just will never sit right with me. That sh Because that's, any other YouTuber could get in trouble. And by the way, for those people being like, oh, twerking was innocent, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, just imagine if the roles were reversed. Imagine if it was an underage girl who was twerking on Omegle for a grown-ass man. Just imagine that. That would be bad, right? So why can't we do the same for little boys? Because they deserve protection too, you know? But I don't know. It's going to be up to YouTube. Hopefully they do the right thing, do the moral thing. At the end of the day, there's plenty of YouTubers out there that can fill in that void. I'm pretty sure you can find any other reactionary channel. Because to me, I didn't care about the Sniper Wolf drama up until Saturday when she put that picture. Before that, I didn't care. Because at the end of the day, who cares? But it's YouTube. You have the only YouTuber, honestly, and I'm being for real, the only YouTuber I find irreplaceable, at least in a company money-making standpoint, is Mr. Beast. I don't think anyone has ever been able to reach the level of influence Mr. Beast has while it's making restaurants chocolate bars and then having over 200 million subscribers on youtube as a person like as a actual youtuber not like a t-series kind of channel where it's a company any other youtuber to me it can be replaced even the youtubers i love even mr beast isn't even in my top 10 favorites but that's just the truth and i'm pretty sure snipey wolf she can get replaced i don't know why it would take you so long to get her removed when you could just find another beautiful girl, do the same thing. I'm sure a bunch of those kids would mind, don't wouldn't mind the gender of, of the person doing the videos. But at the end of the day, I think YouTube is just gonna stick to Snipey. Um, so there's that. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully they do the right thing. But I just completely doubt it. Um, but yeah, and by the way, I know people are gonna be like, "Oh, you you probably had an agenda against Snipey Wolf from the beginning." I never really cared about her. I never did. Like, even when the drama was going on, I didn't make videos about Sniper Wolf because to me, 
I just didn't see it as I cared enough. Like I did make a video on XQC because it was XQC and Sniper Wolf that both were the most heat. I did make a video about XQC and even then I said, I don't really care. I don't really care, bro. I mean, I would prefer that they credit the, the creators and do better at doing reaction content. But the priority to me is, like, it, it was still something that I was like, all right, it doesn't matter that much. Like, we can move on from this. But that's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. I know it was a little long. One of my issues is that I talk for way too long when I don't need to. But, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao. Arrivederci.